Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless you, his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray together the collect of this day. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah 55, the book of the prophet Isaiah. As the rain and the snow came down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign, that thou shalt not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 65, found on page 672 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will read it together. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be performed in Jerusalem. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come because of their transgressions. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blot them out. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth. 
and of the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dust to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout, shout for joy and sing. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal body also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what is sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, and another sixty, and another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Matthew 13, 9 says, let anyone with ears listen. Many have claimed to have heard the voice of God speaking to them, and they may have heard the word of God through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But let me share with you a story, this Paul's story about hearing a voice that encouraged him and stayed with him. The Reverend Corey Arnold tells the story of a man who had a special friend he made while just a boy. When quite young, Paul's father had one of the first telephones in their neighborhood. Paul was a little too little to reach the phone, but used to listen with fascination when his mother talked to it. Then Peter discovered that somewhere inside the wonderful device lived an amazing person. Her name was Information Please, and there was nothing she did not know. Information Please could supply anybody's number and the correct time. Paul's first personal experience with this genie in the bottle came one day while his mother was visiting a neighbor. Amusing himself with a tool bench in the basement, Paul hacked his finger with a hammer. The pain was terrible, but there didn't seem to be any reason in crying because there was no one around to give sympathy. He walked around the house, sucking his throbbing finger, finally arriving at the stairway. The telephone. Quickly, Paul ran for the footstool in the parlor and dragged it to the landing. Climbing up, he unhooked the receiver in the parlor and held it to his ear. Information, please. A click or two and a small, clear voice spoke into Paul's ear. Information. I hurt my finger, Paul wailed into the phone. Isn't your mother home, came to question. Nobody's home but me, Paul blubbered. Are you bleeding, the voice asked. No, he replied. I hit my finger with a hammer and it hurts. Can you open your ice box, she asked. He said he could. Then chip off a little piece of ice and hold it to your finger. After that, Paul called information please for everything. He asked her for help with his geography, and she told him where Philadelphia was. She helped him with his math. She told Paul that his pet chipmunk, which he had caught in the park just the day before, would eat fruit and nuts. Then there was the time that Petey, the pet canary, died. 
Paul called and told her the sad story. She listened and said the usual things grown up say to a soothe a child, but Paul was inconsolable. He asked her, why is it that birds should sing so beautifully and bring joy to all families, only to end up as a heap of feathers on the bottom of a cage? She must have sensed his deep concern. She said quietly, Paul, always remember that there are other worlds to sing in. Somehow he felt better. When Paul was nine years old, his family moved across the country to Boston. Paul missed his friend very much. Information, please, belonged in that old wooden box back home and somehow never thought of trying the shiny new phone that sat on a table in the hall. As he grew into his teens, the memories of those childhood conversations never really left him. Often in moments of doubt, perplexity, Paul would recall the serene sense of security he had then. He appreciated now how patient, understanding, and kind she was to have spent her time on a little boy. A few years later, on his way west to college, Paul's plane put down in Seattle. He had about half an hour or so between planes. He spent 15 minutes on the phone with his sister. Then, without thinking what he was doing, Paul dialed his hometown operator and said, Information, please. Miraculously, he heard the small, clear voice he knew so well. Information. He hadn't planned this, but he heard himself saying, Could you please tell me how to spell fix? There was a long pause. Then came the soft-spoken answer. I guess your finger must have healed by now. Paul laughed. So it's really you. I wonder if you have any idea how much you meant to me during that time. I wonder, she said, if you know how much your calls meant to me. I never had any children, and I used to look forward to your calls. Paul told her how often he had thought of her over the years and asked if he could call her again when he came back to visit his sister. Please do, she said. Just ask for Sally. Three months later, Paul was back in Seattle. A different voice answered information. He asked for Sally. Are you a friend, she asked. Yes, a very old friend, Paul answered. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, she said. Sally has been working part time the last few years because she was sick. She died five weeks ago. Before he could hang up, she said, wait a minute. Is this Paul? Yes, he replied. Well, Sally left a message for you. She wrote it down in case you called. Let me read it to you. A note said, tell him I still say that there are other worlds to sing in. He'll know what I mean. The similarities between Paul and any one of us is striking. How many times have we invoked God's name in search of answers to questions Everything from the mundane to the very critical. And then gaze heavenward waiting for an answer. There are over 500 references in the Bible to hearing. Way before the telephone, the writers of the Bible recognized that there had to be a two-way communication between us and God and God and us. And what is required on our part after we have Pray to God to fix our lives. We need to listen and hear, as Paul heard Sally, between one another, in the world around us, in the stars, in the silence. Be still and know that I am God. Let's talk a minute about senior moments. We all have them and become alarmed when the car keys go missing. Or in my case, I cannot find my glasses and realize they are on the top of my head. Embarrassing to say the least. Most specialists put this down as distraction overload. How many times have I walked downstairs on a critical mission only to arrive in the living room and have no clue what I was going to do? 
But then I also realized I was thinking of, of 40, 11 other things on this during this very important undertaking. We are so easily distracted. And what the readings are telling us today is stop. Stop and hear me out. Isaiah reminds us that for as the rain and snow comes down from the heaven, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. In Matthew, Jesus commands the crowd to listen. I've been telling you from the beginning how to fix it, but your head is in the clouds. You have ears, don't you? Let anyone who have ears listen. God has been commu communicating with us from the beginning of time. The Gospel of John reminds us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Information, please, has been with us from the moment of creation. It preceded the Encyclopedia Britannica and the telephone and iPhones. Answers to your questions are readily available and always have been. The Celts call it a thin place. The idea is to find that place in our souls and in our world that we can go to and hear the voices say to us, information, please. Phyllis Tickle in the book, The Life of Meaning, describes her thin place. You can't mix bread without being in a thin activity. When your hands are in the dough and when you're steeled and when your attention is still to exactly what that yeast will and won't let you do, and it's different every time you put your hands in it. You're in the kind of activity that says, I am manipulating, I am shaping, I am dealing with life, and it deals back. And it becomes a kind of prayer. Your mind is stilled. It's time for us to turn things off, turn off the electronics, turn off the news. Give Facebook a break. Turn off the 4011 distractions that are causing interference on the telephone line with God. All our calling out to God for help is useless if we are deaf. Find that thin place where there is a good connection and be still and listen. I close with a reading from the book of Proverbs. If you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mercifully receive our prayers, O God, that we may know your ways and follow where you lead, responding, hear us, good Lord. For those who are seeking a spiritual home, that they may be inspired to visit our churches and to receive a deep sense of God's presence through our worship together and the hospitality we share. In the Anglican cycle of prayer this week, we pray for the Diocese of Mandalay, Myanmar, and Toronto, Canada. In our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, we pray for Divina Grazia Motsovi. And in the Diocese of Georgia, we pray for St. Luke's Rincon and for our ecumenical partners in Rincon, especially Jerusalem Lutheran Church and St. John's Lutheran Church. Let us pray saying, hear us, good Lord, that we may be set free from the need to claim our worthiness through possessions and position so that we may discover our true identity in the life and hope of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray saying, hear us, good Lord. That the light of Christ will reveal the path to those for whom the shadows are long, the poor and desperate, the lonely and unemployed, the hungry and fearful, the refugee and homeless, the prisoner and those who live as if in prison, the sick, the suffering, and those in any need especially all those on our continuing prayer list. Are there others? That we may not forget them, and for the protection and well-being of all healthcare workers on the front lines of this pandemic, that they will be kept safe by the power of Jesus' healing love, let us pray, saying, Hear us, good Lord. For safety for children who are on vacation, that they may have the chance to learn new skills build healthy bodies, and develop new and lasting friendships. Let us pray, saying, Hear us, good Lord. For our Commander-in-Chief and all who serve in the armed forces, that we may be thankful for their many sacrifices and honor the service they render to our country and to the security of the world. Let us pray, saying, Hear us, good Lord. For our Parish and Discernment Committee, that with the grace and energy of the Holy Spirit, we will prepare ourselves for what God is about in the discernment process, that we will see clearly and act with grace in concord with the Spirit. And for the person that God is already preparing to come to us, let us pray, saying, hear us, good Lord. For those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Cliff, Susan, Paige, and Hannah, are there others? Let us pray, saying, Hear us, good Lord. For those celebrating anniversaries this week, especially Pat and Laura, are there others? Let us pray, saying, Hear us, good Lord. For those who have died, are there any? That they may reside in that place where there is no sorrow or pain, but life everlasting. Let us pray, saying, Hear us, good Lord. With heart and mind turned toward God, we offer our prayers and thanksgivings. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space. Galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord. We are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciles. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn.
so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us pray the act of spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering particularly my own parents, 
I long to offer praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.
serve the Lord. Thanks be God.